Okay, DNA replication. Is DNA making copies of itself so that mitosis can happen? It happens during the S phase of the cell cycle, which stands for synthesis phase. That's when DNA replication happens. And basically what's happening during DNA replication is you have your one chromosome, and of course you have 46 of them, but each chromosome is getting a duplicate of itself. That DNA molecule, this one over here, that chromatid is being replicated to the other chromatid, being copied, an exact copy. So that's a big overview of DNA replication, is DNA making a copy of itself. DNA replication starts by an enzyme called helicase. And helicase is an enzyme that unwinds the DNA double helix. So it kind of goes, moves like a jet engine, spinning around, unwinding this DNA molecule. So we have the two strands. Now DNA is anti-parallel, so if this strand is, uh, strand is five prime to three prime, then this strand on the bottom must be three prime to five prime. So five to three is the way to be. That's a good thing to remember for a DNA replication because that's how the enzyme DNA polymerase works. So this enzyme that unwinds the DNA is called helicase. Like most enzymes, it ends in ace, and then the helic Reminds you of the double helix that's being unwound. So it's unwinding the DNA, opening it up. Now, actually, this is happening. If you were look to look at a DNA molecule that's undergoing replication in a eukaryotic cell, you'd actually see a bunch of what are called replication bubbles that are actually, each one of these is the DNA being pulled apart by helicase in both directions um, so that it can be replicated. So we're just looking at a small part called a replication fork. Now, DNA polymerase... So the replication fork is right here, and on the bubbles it would be right there. So, there's, so what we're doing here is we're blowing up this one replication fork. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next uh, enzyme that comes in, depending on what, there's one called primase, and primase comes in and lays down an RNA primer in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So that primase lays down a primer. And that, remember, it's an enzyme, it's ACE and primase. So it's like, like a coating of paint. And this is actually an RNA primer. It lays down an RNA primer. And then the most important enzyme is called polymerase. And polymerase comes in, and it lays down the new DNA in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. 5' prime to 3' prime direction. And that, because it's towards the fork, because it's going towards the replication fork, and this is opening up, and it could be a one continuous strand, that is called the leading strand. After school program, your buses here, after school program. So because it's going towards the replication fork, it's all in one strand, that's called the leading strand. And it's going towards the It's going towards the replication fork. And leading strands always go towards the replication fork. Um, in a five prime to three prime direction. The strand that's moving away from the leading fork also has an RNA primer laid down. Um, but that is a, so five prime to three prime. And in fact, in a way, you could think of it as a bunch of different small segments that are going to be put down together, five prime to three prime. Now, the question I didn't have answered until even after college, having majored in biochemistry, was why is this part in, in fragments? And this part is called the legging strand. It actually is being made at the same time. But polymerase can only work in a five prime to three prime direction. Five prime to three prime, five prime, prime to three prime. So why is this strand in one piece and this strand is in broken up what are called Okazaki fragments? And the answer to that question lies in the fact that helicase is busy opening up this DNA. You think of it kind of like a zipper. So if DNA is opening this up as a zipper, so this zipper is the DNA. Glad I brought my vest today. If this zipper is the DNA, helicase is the actual zipper part. Here's the leaving strand. We'll see it's on the top here going towards the replication fork. But meanwhile, 
a primer gets laid down here on the lagging strand and it has to be replicated, right? But in that meantime, this has been opening up more. This leading strand can keep going, but now it's got to start back further for the lagging strand. Opens up some more. The leading strand can keep going, but this one needs to start a new one. So that's why it's made up of fragments. Those are called Okazaki fragments. To seal these up, because we have lots of little gaps, right? We have to seal these gaps and replace this, this RNA and seal these Okazaki fragments up. That's another enzyme. And what that enzyme is that does that is called ligase. So ligase seals the gaps in the DNA. Seals the gaps. Another enzyme that seals the gaps. So basically what you end up with that at the end of DNA replication, you have to remember the big idea is you get end up with identical copies. So you started with an original copy of DNA. You split that original DNA up, and the new DNA got made. And so now you have two new pieces of DNA which are identical to the first one, which are half old and half new, and that half newness is called, so that's called semi-conservative, semi meaning half, conservative meaning saved, replication, meaning that it's copied. So semi-conservative replication.